Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled, action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. This current video is an introduction to verification and validation, how processes and products are verified and validated. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and let's get started! In this video, we will cover definitions for verification and validation, and verification and validation process per the V-curve. Let's cover verification and validation definitions. So what is verification? In general terms, it means to confirm that an object, statement, event, and so forth are accurate and valid or as intended or advertised through a process-driven approach. In engineering, it means to confirm that component, subsystem, or systems meet the requirements and technical specifications. In manufacturing, it means to confirm the process and production equipment and production fixtures and so forth meet design requirements and engineering specifications. Let's go ahead and define validation now. So what is validation? In general terms, it means to confirm that an object, statement, event, and so forth is accurate or valid, or as intended or advertised through an action-driven approach. In engineering, it means to confirm that a component, subsystem, or system meets the customer's needs or requirements. In manufacturing, it means to confirm that a process, production equipment, production fixture, and so forth ensures that the assembly of the component, subsystem, or system meets the customer's needs and requirements. Let's go ahead and cover the verification and validation process for a product or system development life cycle. Pictured is the VMV or V-curve. This diagram provides the process of how to develop, verify, and validate a product based on customer needs or requirements. The left hand of the curve is the design process, while the right hand curve is the verification and validation process. Let's cover each step as shown in the example V-curve. The customer requirements are how the customer expects the part or system you are developing to operate and perform and have the features that they would like to have. This is the parameters, features, and performance, warranty, etc. that the customer requires or wants for the product or system. The next step is the system requirements. This is the V-curve portion where the engineering teams come up with a high-level technical solution to meet the customer requirements. Some folks get confused and think that the customer requirements and system requirements are different terms for the same documentation deliverables. However, this is far from the truth and those terms are not interchangeable. For example, a customer requirement may state that a vehicle must go 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. Is this sufficient for fabricating a vehicle that goes 0 to 60 seconds? Nope! There's a myriad of automotive subsystems that require a well thought out technical solution to achieve this target. For instance, the 0 to 60 in 3 seconds requirement will require integrated technical solutions that require multidisciplinary input, collaboration, and agreement in order to achieve the requirement. That is not as simple as it may look. Everything from the horsepower and torque for the propulsion system of the vehicle to the weight, aerodynamics, chassis, tire, and wheel selection, and so forth. Also, safety considerations must be taken into account as well as you lighten your vehicle and make it lighter and lighter to achieve the customer requirement for 0 to 60 at 3 seconds. Safety considerations such as crash safety and crash design become more and more complex and require a well thought out technical solution. Once the system requirements and system architecture are defined, an SFR or system functional review is performed to ensure that there is cross-functional agreement among engineering teams that the system requirements and system architecture meet the customer's requirements. The next step is the subsystem design. This is where engineering groups responsible for a particular subsystem develop their technical solutions to meet the system level requirements. A PDR or preliminary design review is then performed to look for issues with each part of the design thus far and to fix any technical issues before going deeper into detail in the design process. During the preliminary design reviews, reliability verification and validation teams should be a part of the step in order to both acquire information to begin developing reliability verification and validation test plans along with providing input on any potential issues that may cause reliability and durability targets not to be met. The reliability verification and validation teams should also be part of the development of the DEFEMAs for subsystem and system level as these will be used as inputs into what will need to be verified as part of the risk-based 
verification and validation process and will be translated into reliability verification or validation actions based on the type of failure mode, the severity of the failure mode, and the probability of occurrences. The next step is the detailed level design. This is where components are selected to meet the subsystem functional targets. Reliability engineering should be involved at this step as they will need to assess component reliability, which should be supplied by the manufacturer or supplier of the part. If data does not exist for a particular part because it's a new technology, for example, then the reliability engineering team will need to conduct their own reliability testing as part of the development process. This can be both tricky and time consuming and typically, the component will be integrated into the design before testing and analysis has been completed. It will be a technical and program risk decision to move forward with a part or component as reliability studies are performed in parallel. After the detailed level design is completed, a CDR or critical design review is performed. This is the last chance to dive deep into the design and make sure there aren't any outstanding issues or corrections that need to be made before spending time and money on purchasing and fabricating parts. The next step is the execution step. This is where the software is coded, parts are fabricated, or ordered from suppliers. The suppliers are responsible typically for running tests to validate that a physical part or component meet your requirements as the OEM or subsystem supplier. Additionally, during this step, things such as test fixtures and test harnessing are built to support the upcoming verification and validation tasks. As we move on to the right-hand side of the V-curve, we will perform a TRR or Test Readiness Review. A TRR is critical as it ensures that there aren't any outstanding issues and that nothing has been missed during the test planning by the verification, validation, and reliability teams. This is where the validation plans, procedures, and test parameters are reviewed to ensure that all critical functions, features, and field usage environments are addressed. The TRR is important also because it is used to verify that a location has been selected for verification and validation activities, that support equipment has been purchased or built, and that parts such as test fixtures, harnesses, or software have been built or purchased, and that nothing has been missed to prevent the program schedule from slipping. Notice I have separated the lower and upper part of the V into two sections, which shows the verification steps followed by the validation steps. The first is the subsystem integration and testing step. This is where you take components or parts and integrate them together to make a subsystem that carries a certain function or provides certain features for the entire system. This typically starts as bench testing and progresses into other types of testing, such as temperature testing or vibration testing, depending on the function of the system and the application environments of the overall system. At the bench level, verification engineers will verify that the subsystem meets the design requirements. For instance, for an electronic subsystem, the verification engineer will test to see if outputs or signals match up to their expected output in the system requirements document. Likewise, a software engineer will test to make sure software components that they developed and tested operate as intended per the system requirements when integrated into software modules. Next, we will have the system integration and testing. This is where you take all of your sub-assemblies and put them together as your system. This is another verification step where you verify your sub-assemblies operate as a unified system that meets the requirements and features of your system requirements and architecture. Likewise, on the software side, you will take all of your software modules and put them together as a software system and ensure that they meet the software requirements or system requirements for your product or system. Typically, this is done by running predetermined system level corner cases that are developed and called test cases. So you have integrated all of your software and hardware together and it is working as intended per the system requirements. We're done here, right? Nope, this is only part of the sequence that you will perform or that the engineering teams will perform as part of the product development process. Functionality and feature verification and making sure your system operates under optimal conditions is only part of the design equation. What if conditions are not optimal? What if the user is abusing or misusing the product? 
Well, you won't design your product to cover every corner case that some idiot will try to do with your system or product, you need to consider how the product is going to be used and how to optimize the product to ensure that it meets warranty or as advertised warranty numbers. A reliability engineering team's job is to assess risk. They will perform accelerated life tests and step stress and design margin tests in order to determine the expected life of the product at the target reliability and confidence level. Verification and validation engineering teams will test the system to different electrical, environmental, and mechanical environments to ensure that the system operates under different types of environments as listed in the system requirements document. After verification activities have been completed, which is a combination of simulation, documentation checks, dimensional checks, and physical testing, an SVR should be performed. SVR stands for System Verification Review. This is where all of the stakeholders for the program review all verification activities to make a decision to move into a preliminary production phase or to decide to make a change to the design if a risk assessment determines that customer requirements will not be met or if there are any weaknesses or shortcomings in the system design. Verifying the design and the requirements should be an ongoing effort prior to the SVR, but the SVR is used as a final sanity check before moving into purchasing more materials and spending money on hard tooling for mass production. Depending on the program schedule, however, an SVR may be performed prior to the completion of verification and testing activities, and a risk call is made to start cutting hard tooling to prepare for mass production and to keep the system production program schedule on track. Next up is design validation. This is where you run through hardware, mechanical, and software test plans that are tailored to the customer's requirements. If you had all the planets aligned at this point, you have designed enough design margin into your product and covered enough function and feature corner cases to breeze through validation testing. But this is the real world. Depending on how fast the program is moving and the experience level of the engineering team, you will most likely run into issues such as minor software bugs, hardware, and mechanical issues. However, I have seen cases where hard tooling for some parts had to change, components had to be switched to a different supplier, and materials had to be added to brackets and other mechanical components. Even mounting holes had to be changed or moved, and electrical harnessing and mechanical piping had to be rerouted. These issues actually happen a lot and can cost thousands and even millions of dollars and days, weeks, or even months of schedule slippage. So be careful and observant and look for any issues during the verification phase with your design. In parallel to design validation, production validation checks and tests are performed by the production or manufacturing engineering teams to ensure that a system meets the customer's requirements and also satisfies the design requirements. This can be an interesting phase sometimes, as if there are build issues, the process or technology selection for manufacturing may be blamed, but it could also be a design for manufacturability issue. If you have engineering teams and production teams pointing fingers at each other, or engineering and production teams are having a finger pointing contest, you will be wasting a lot of time and money as both teams try to prove that how they are building or designing the system or product is correct for that specific application. This is why it's important for manufacturing engineering and design engineering to communicate and work together throughout the entire product development process so that there are no issues during production validation. One more thing I forgot to mention before we continue is the regulatory and compliance aspects of the product development life cycle. A compliance team should be involved throughout the entire design process to ensure that components selected and the system as a whole meet regulatory and compliance requirements for the target market or country in which the system or product are to be sold. Some of this is simply documentation, while other parts are testing, such as government-mandated safety testing to ensure the product or system do not kill the intended customer. Next up is the production release. Depending on the industry, this can vary, but it is a final review checklist to make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed and that all reports, data, and requirements have been met for production. Once your system or product has exited the production release gate, it is ready to be mass produced and shipped to your customer. While it may seem like engineering and manufacturing engineering's jobs are done here, maintaining the highest level of quality and reliability is an ongoing process. Checks and tests must be put in place as part of an ongoing and quality and reliability effort to ensure the product or system maintains the target customer requirements for the life of the program and after mass production release. And that's it folks! Some key takeaways from this video are communicate. 
don't work in silos, and don't be that person or team that keeps issues under wrap until the 11th hour. All different disciplines and teams should have an open two-way form of communication to ensure everyone is on the same page and in agreement. Don't wait until formal meetings to talk to other teams to prevent slowdowns or added costs to the program. All teams at a company are moving towards the same goal of making a world-class system or product for their customers. So don't play politics or only communicate within your particular team. Plan out your verification and validation activities using a risk-based approach. What this means is understand your product or production risks by utilizing DeFemas and Pafemas to determine areas of the design and production process that need to be focused upon that were determined to be of the highest risk priorities. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments or need help with verification and validation, feel free to reach out to me at one of the links below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.